Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News, some of the most hard-hitting TV you're going to see anywhere. I'm your host, Rob Dew, and today is Thursday, May 24th, 2012, and here's a little look at what we have coming up. Tonight, Rob Dew speaks with Norman Horn of Stop Austin Scanners about the fact that airport scanners don't even work and pose a risk to public health. Plus... Facebook sued and investigated how an IPO promoted to save the stock market was simply another insider scam. Then, vaccinations cause a mass exodus from Texas colleges. All that and more up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. Let's get on to our top story tonight. Did you get zuckered out there? Did you cash in on the bonanza the so-called bonanza that was flamed by the media, that, that was the Facebook IPO, well, so did a lot of people, if you're one of those people out there. And in fact, Facebook shareholders sue company and its bankers over fishy IPO that's coming out of Reuters. And some investors were shocked when lead underwriter Morgan Stanley reduced its revenue forecasts of the company shortly before Facebook's IPO, supposedly an amendment to its S1 filing on May 9th over increased mobile risk. Now, did that news make it anywhere with all the Facebook news? That was the news that, well, just didn't make it out there for everybody to see. Isn't that convenient? Very convenient for everyone out there. Kurt Nemo writes as well, coming out today, irrational exuberance. Congress promises to review Facebook banks, bankster scam. Like, we believe that. Just like they were going to um, review John Corzine and the dealings there. Just like every other banking scandal that comes and goes. All the banks that failed and that we had to prop up. Not one person got in trouble, save Bernie Madoff and maybe a couple other flies in the ointment. Insiders paid only 1.1% of the $38 offering price, remarkably low for an initial public offering, thanks to an underwriting discount arranged by Morgan Stanley. Facebook insiders who sold the offering not only got a high price for their shares, they got to keep an extraordinarily large portion of the, proce of the proceeds, writes Alan Sloan. And so Kurt was linking to that in his article, which you can check out on Infowars.com. Irrational exuberance, Congress promises to review Facebook bankster scam. And uh, Aaron Dykes and I worked a long time on that piece that he, well, he did a lot of work on. And I encouraged him. He said, you know, I think it's, it looks like a pump and dump. And I said, you know what? It probably is a pump and dump. Let's go with it. We came out with that report. Uh, where he was standing in front of the, the Facebook graphic, and, um, you know, we put that up in many different forms on the Internet, but we're going to, uh, I think, replay that again on Monday, just so everybody can see that, you know, we're out there, we're watching the stuff, and we're watching the news, and we're, we're reporting on the news that people aren't going to report on, especially the mainstream media. Moving on to another Zuckered, I guess. It's uh, the people who believe, oh, there he is, our, our newest action villain, Osama bin Laden. Black Op Down, Hollywood jazzes up fake Osama raid for the children. That's by Saman Mohammadi, who's one of our contributors here. And uh, here's a good quote. Judicial Watch has also sued the White House seeking documents showing the administration's collaboration with Hollywood filmmakers, of the Hurt, including Hurt Locker director Catherine Bigelow and screenwriter Mark Boyle, who have been planning a big-budget studio film from Sony recounting the raid that killed bin Laden and oh so coincidentally scheduled for a release in October 2012, just before the election. So we have our war hero president up there as who's ordering the raid, and he's in that danger room photo. Oh, wait, that wasn't the situation room. That was, that was all fake. That was just like a studio, just like a Hollywood production. But, you know, we believed it. We believed in our president who's there to help us and with uh, hope and change. Um, here's, here's another great, great quote from Saman. The film will be terror propaganda on steroids. The magicians in Hollywood and their masters at the Pentagon are inventing reality for the big screen, transforming President Obama into a postmodern war hero. After the movie, people will go away thinking, not that the raid never happened, but even more brainwashed into buying the official story of bin Laden's death. Yeah, they shot this guy. He was first. He was holding guns on him. He he grabbed was using it, one of his wives as a human shield. Oh, but then that never happened. But then there's the helicopter that blew up. But don't pay attention to that. Then we took his body and quickly flew it by helicopter over uh, the sea and dumped it in there in a coffin in an unmarked area. No one's ever going to find it. Although there's a treasure hunter out there looking for it who's, not, who's now afraid of his life that he may be. Uh, singled out by the Obama administration, maybe for one of those drone attacks. 
that we're going to have out there. We'll stay tuned to that. Meanwhile, and this is a story that came out of Austin, and surprisingly, a very uh, balanced piece, even though I think they shouldn't even show the other side of the story because it's been proven to be fraudulent. Fluoridated city water, is it worth the added expense? And that's out of KITV. And this report is definitely thanks to the work of, of a lot of the great uh, patriots and activists at uh, fluoridefreeaustin.com. But you won't find fluoride in his practice talking about Dr. Gent. After much research, Dr. Gent has concluded fluoride isn't the anti-cavity magic bullet taught in dental school. Instead of taught, they should say beaten because uh, that's definitely a form. In fact, I'm going to erase that right there. They, they implant that into the students' minds all the time that fluoride's good for you, 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 fluoride's good for you. So if I stay it enough times, you're going to believe me, right? Fluoride's good for, for much you. It's good for your teeth. Oh, but if you drink it, your fluoride or your thyroid is going to get all messed up. Your bones are going to become gr brittle. It's going to embed in your pineal gland. It's crazy. We're going to go to a, a quick clip of that, and it and coincides with I, I put Dr. Gent's uh, comments and contrasted them with our current mayor, uh, who's you know, obviously a stooge for Agenda 21 and mass mind control because he is definitely for the practice of fluoridation. Let's go to that clip now. After much research, Dr. Gent has concluded fluoride is not the anti-cavity magic bullet taught in dental school. In fact, he believes it's bad for you. It is a byproduct of fertilizer production, and it's contaminated with arsenic, lead, all sorts of bad stuff. And we put that in our water with the idea that it does reduce tooth decay. A lot of people, including, uh, I would, I have to say, my dentist believes that, that it's a very good thing to have fluoride in the water, and it's been a major factor in uh, reducing uh, tooth decay in children, especially. It's a drug. It's being put in our in our in our water to act as a drug, but it's never gone through the proper FDA approval process to ensure that it is safe and effective. So we have a educated professional, and then an ignorant public servant, each showing you their side of the story. Now, I'm going to show you a clip here. This is 20 minutes of an over-hour piece we did with Dr. Conant, who is here in this studio. He's been here several times. He's spoken to that particular mayor and city council in Austin, telling them that this is a, an arcane practice. This is the equivalent of flat earth belief in water fluoridation. I don't care what the CDC says. They're paid off. Okay, the FDA has not approved this as a food uh, byproduct. They haven't approved it, and they never will because they know it causes cancer. They know there's all kind of problems associated with it, but through this weird loophole, we're getting it in our water every day here in Austin, Texas. So we're going to roll that Dr. Connett piece, and please show this to your uneducated, your dumbed down, your sleepy zombie friends, and maybe you can wake a few of them up. Let's roll the clip. I think the most important thing to recognize about fluoride is that it's extremely toxic. It is very active biologically, interfering with many basic biochemical processes, uh, enzymes, G proteins, hydrogen bonds, and so on. So it shouldn't surprise us that there's a wide range of health effects that are attributed to fluoride. But the bottom line is that fluoride is extremely active biologically, that the first opponents of fluoridation going back to the 1950s were biochemists, inclu including scientists like James Sumner, who won a, a Nobel Prize for enzyme chemistry. And incidentally, there is no doubt that fluoride damages health because millions of people in India, China, and parts of Africa have had their health ruined by fluoride. The people have been crippled by fluoride and many other health effects. The argument as far as fluoridation is concerned, is, is there an adequate margin of safety between the doses which cause this known harm and incidentally documented in this report by the National Research Council published in 2006. Here a in, uh, fairly independent balanced panel looked at the literature for three years and in this 507 page report and 1100 references indicated that the EPA safe drinking water standard for fluoridation, for fluoride, is four parts per million, it's not safe, it's not protective of health, and needs to be lowered. But before I get into the health effects, let me explain my first concern, which remains my top concern. The level of fluoride in mother's milk, mother's breast milk, baby's first meal, is extremely low. 
It's 0 0.004 parts per million. That means a bottle-fed baby in a fluoridated community in the United States, where we fluoridate the water at one part per million, is getting 250 times higher dose of fluoride than a breastfed baby. And that is extremely disturbing. This is a hazardous waste. No question about it. It's not only hexafluorosilicic acid, but it's a lot of crap that Neil was talking about. It's got lead and arsenic and mercury and radioactive uh, isotopes, maybe trace amounts. They can't dump that into the sea by international law. They can't dump it locally because it's too concentrated. But wait for it. If someone buys it from them, it's, it, it, you take away the label hazardous waste, and it becomes a product. It becomes a product. And who's going to buy this stuff from them? Oh, our water department. So the water departments buy this hazardous waste, it becomes a product, and now they put it in our drinking water. And now, let me go through the list of health concerns. Some of them are more certain than others. Let me begin with the certain one. Dental fluorosis. Fluoride causes a discoloration, mottling of the tooth enamel. When this practice began in 1945, the promoters of fluoridation thought they could limit dental fluorosis to 10% of the children in its very mild form. And the very mild form has little specks of, of uh, white, opaque patches on the cusp of the teeth, up to 25%. And they thought that only dentists would notice this. And was an acceptable trade-off with what they thought would be a lowering of tooth decay. Well, in November of 2010, the Center of Disease Control told us that children aged 12 to 15 in the United States 41% of them now have dental fluorosis. And not only the very mild, but the mild, which impacts up to 50% of the tooth surface, moderate, which impacts up to 100% of the tooth surface, and severe, where you not only have the whole surface impacted, but indentations, chipping of the teeth, and so on. And 3.6% of children aged 12 to 15 in the United States have either moderate or